Hey guys! Yes, I know I look weird. It's just the lighting, you know? I'm feeling a little pale. <laughs> now this is the Tatcha... This is not good for talking in, is it? <laughs> this is the Tatcha Luminous Glo Glowing Skin Mask that I got in my BoxyCharm. I figured I'd try it out this evening since I had a few minutes. Um. I am sorry about the lighting. It's a little wonky in here right now. It's dark and one of my light sources is usually outside, but right now is kind of my best opportunity to get a really good video for you guys. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do the thing. <laughs> we have about five more. Try that. We have about five more minutes on the mask. Which I'm sure a lot of it's gonna get cut. <laughs> so you won't have to just stare at me with this mask for five minutes, I promise. But I did wanna let you guys know kinda what we we're doing today and uh, say a little something about this mask. It seems nice so far, don't really have any complaints. Um, kinda funny about sheet masks myself, I don't use them very much, but this one's kinda nice. So, and it's Tatcha, which is something I would never buy for myself to try. But yeah, um, today we're just going to kind of do some makeup playtime. I got a bunch of new stuff. Um, the only thing that I got that's new that I'm not going to use on camera here is my new Maybelline Super Stay Foundation because it's almost 8 o'clock at night and there's no reason for me to be putting on a full coverage foundation at 8 o'clock at night. So I'm just going to use my lightest coverage foundation and move on from there. I'm going to disappear for a hot minute. I'm going to prep a few things and when we come back... I'll take this mask off, give you a couple of thoughts about it, and then we can we can get started on the makeup part of this whole thing. And you'll be able to see my facial expressions instead of just hoping that you understand me. I'm back. It's time to take the mask off. There we go. But according to the instructions which I read previous to this, you can massage the rest of the serum into your skin. Ooh, I look super dewy. But considering this is a dewy sort of product, I am unsurprised. Um, it's very refreshing, which is nice. I was hoping for refreshing. I was definitely feeling it a little bit at the end of a day after cooking and all of that, so... Nice and refreshing, which is always good. There we go. It's all massaged in. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started setting up my face for my makeup playtime. I'm gonna go out and head in with my Cover FX Blurring Primer. <sighs> so how have all you guys been? Is life been treating you all right? Eep! I'm running low on this. I'm trying to, uh... Trying to finish it off as quickly as possible because I have a lot of random primer and I'm basically using two. Using my Benefit one when I have oil based foundations and my um, hard candy one when I have water based ones. Ooh. So we're going to put this all over. This guy is not full good. <laughs> Putting zip zapper on it, but uh, it's feeling like it's got a head on it now. I think I need to pop it. And yes, I'm a zip popper. Leave me be. Let me pop my zits and teeth. Thank you very much. Um, I think for makeup playtime, I'm gonna skip on the color correct, except for this guy here. Since I'm just here to goof off. Not really here to look fancy. Don't think I'm gonna be going anywhere. So I'm just gonna rub a tiny bit of that green right into that little red splotchy guy there. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth in 110 Porcelain. Lord, it's been a while. 
and I tend to just dabble a smidgen on the back of my hand, or in this case a lot, and just grab my sponge and kind of buff it all in or bump it all in or however you want to say it. This is my like lightest coverage, I think. I can build it up for sure, but most of the time it's just my, I'm feeling like having a chill makeup sort of a day kind of a foundation. Let's get a little bit more in this, I think. Oop, oop, that's a little bit more than I wanted. Let's get some of this back in the bottle. Ooh, lordy, this might be a more full coverage sort of a look than I expected now that I have way more of this. I think my favorite thing about this foundation is that it's so cheap. It is the cheapest drugstore foundation I have yet seen. Um, it's like six dollars at my local Walmart. It's more expensive at like Ulta or someplace like that, but if you're willing to uh, pick it up from Wally World or even Target, it's really cheap at Target too. Um, Wow, I forgot how shiny this makes me look. <laughs> this is such a dewy foundation. So dewy. Okay, I think everything's blended properly so that I don't look but so sketchy at this point. I'm gonna dry down a little bit while I'm putting my concealer on. Stick this guy back in here and grab my um, Maybelline Master Conceal in Fair. And I think I'm just going to use it on my little look right here. And maybe a tiny bit under my eyes. Right? Oh my goodness, look how dirty this thing is. It just, I clean it every time I use it and it still looks really gross right now. That's no good. Buff that in, blend that in, whatever you want to use, word-wise. Wow, that's really, really dewy for foundation. All right, now I'm going to go in with my Cody Airspun in Naturally Neutral. Uh, most people like the translucent. I actually got the wrong one by accident, so that's what I use. I just tap some in the lid, like you just heard me doing. And then I'm going to take, which brush am I going to use today? I'm going to take my crown brush like I usually do and just kind of tap it and then tap off the excess. That's super important. Ooh. Ooh, standby. Got it all over my laptop. Had to uh, fix that. So now I'm just going to set. These two play really nicely together because the foundation is so dewy. And this is so matte that they kind of balance each other out and make my skin look a lot more natural. I didn't grab too much powder. Huh, I'm off my game tonight, clearly. So you see I look a little bit more normal and less like I just stopped exercising or something. I did get a new brow product, which I'm super excited about. This is the e.l.f. It's just the e.l.f. brow pencil in um, deep brown. It comes a little spooly and then it's got a little pencil-y guy on this end. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna brush through my brows with the spoolie. Now this isn't a complete first impression on this because I have used this before. I'm gonna grab a palette with a mirror. Now I'm going to try this out with some brow action. I'm not gonna do anything fancy this go around. I'm just gonna kind of fill my brows in a little bit. This pencil's really nice. Like, you can see where I've put it. It's very pigmented. It's very soft. It's pretty easy to maneuver. I'm not sure how I feel about trying to get really precise lines with it, but, you know, that's what cleaning up your brows with concealer is for. Yeah, look at that. Nice and full. Then I just brush it out with this guy. Makes it look a little bit more natural. Ooh, that one's even better. I like this color a lot. Um, a lot of brow products are really, really warm toned, and my hair is very cool toned, as you can see at the root. You might not be able to see it right now. The lighting in here is a little funky. Um, but 
you know, my hair's cool toned at the roots, so. This is just, it makes my brows the right, they're, it's the right color for my brows. Having like cool toned stuff going on in my brows can occasionally get a little bit frustrating with, uh, or having warm toned stuff in my brows when my brows are cool toned can be a little annoying, so. That's a thing. Um, stand by. Okay. Lighting situation, as you can see, is a little bit better. Um, I got a little portable ring light, and it's super cool. I love it. Um, I've been using it to help lighten things up in my, um, you know, in here with the, my photos, my videos, everything else. Um, but uh, it's the first time it's died on me, and it went so slowly, I didn't realize what was happening. So right now, it's just kind of sitting there, lightening things up. It's not really where it should be but it's helping so that's what I'm worried about right now is that it's helping since that's happening I'm a lot concerned all right so new product time this is by the balm cosmetics it's the manizer sisters it comes with a bronzer a blush and a highlight and they all have cute names this is the Betty Lou, the Betty Lou Manizer, the Cindy Lou Manizer, and the Mary Lou Manizer. I have used the Mary Lou Manizer before. I got a sample of it in an Ipsy bag, and it was so good. It's such a good highlight. Now, I'm not going to be using it today, but it's really good. Here, I'll swatch it for you. Look at all that pigment. It's like a very natural sort of a highlight. Is it going to... There it is. I had to get it in the light. You can kind of see it right there. It's very, very subtle, very light, but super bright. Light bright. Um, today I'm just going to use the bronzer and the blush. So I'm going to take this interesting little guy here. This is a cool brush and kind of tap it in here and then make a line. I know this sounds really sketchy, but I'm going to take a big fluffy one, get a little tiny bit more on the end, and then blend everything out. It really sharpens my cheekbones without bringing it too far in. That was a, that was something I was really bad about, was bringing my bronzer too far. So if you do it like this, with this kind of a brush, it places the majority of the product in a very specific place, then you just diffuse it, and it helps your face. I'm going to also go ahead and contour under here. Same deal. And then I'm just gonna warm up my skin up here. I will say, as much as I love this bronzer, it's really nice. I don't think it's gonna replace my Too Faced one. This one is very shimmery, which I like as a bronzer, but less so for a contour shade. Um, what I would probably do is I would use the Too Faced one as a contour shade and then use this on top for kind of a shimmery bronzy thing happening. Crown blush brush, the Cindy Lou Manizer. It's just a kind of a baby pink blush shade, but it's very luminous. Like it's got a good glow to it. I like to kind of bring a tiny bit, kind of shadow these little apples of my cheeks, and then I take a tiny little bit on the end of my nose, like so. And as I said, I'm not using the highlight out of this. I'm going to use my brand new Makeup Revolution um, Soph X Highlighter Palette. This is this was in, in collaboration with YouTuber Soph Does Nails, who I love to death. Um, one of my favorite things is seeing her geek out over a new blinding beautiful highlight. Because honestly, haven't we all felt the same? Like you just put one on and you're just like glow. So I love watching her. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out one of the more unique shades in this palette. This is what we get. Eight shades, some of which are baked and some of which are pressed. The baked ones you can tell are the ones that have this unique texture like this one. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into this very unique green looking shade here build it up. This is one of the powder highlights, not one of, or one of the pressed ones, not one of the baked ones. So. Ooh, there we go. This one's really subtle. 
Or am I just, no, no, it's not. The light was just bad. Whew. Yeah, I just don't have a good enough angle on that one. This is, like I said, I've used all these products at least once. So, um, so far the highlighters are really blinding and super buttery and pretty. Um, and just overall really impressive. So, <laughs> there's not much more I can say about it. Other than... It's awesome. <laughs> For eyeshadow primer, I'm going to use my Wet n Wild Photo Focus eyeshadow primer. I'm going to take a little bit, kind of, and then tap it. Tap, tap, tap it on the lids. Like so. Alrighty. And I got one more really awesome new item that I cannot wait to share with you guys. The Makeup Revolution collab with Emily Noel, the Once palette. Here. I will show it to you. I love the packaging, it's very, like it's, it's very sturdy, it's kind of got a plasticky thing happening. This is very peachy, this is like a rose gold color, the signature and everything else. And the mirror is ginormous, like do you see this mirror? I'll hit it back a smidgen. And then here we are. All sorts of fun, beautiful, gorgeous colors. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with these. There's so many pretty ones. Um, I used, I did like a full pink look the other day, which was actually really great. Also, pro tip, if you get a boxy charm, this stuff comes in the boxy, and you can kind of hold on to it and use it to clean your brushes off with. So you see it now, and then there we are. It's a lot nicer, isn't it? Um, what brush am I gonna use? I'm gonna use this one, clean this guy off. That's a bit better. I'm going to dip into, oh my goodness, there's so many pretty colors. Back. Um, I'm gonna dip into Hobby, which is this one right here. And I'm going to work that into my crease. Ooh, okay. This is the first shade that's had any real kickback. This one kind of powders up a bit when you use it. I didn't have any of that any trouble with that yesterday when I was using the other ones. It's not awful, but it is a little bit. Like it's there. This one's also very subtle. But that also could be because of, yeah, that was the lighting I was looking at. It's not very subtle. Well, it is subtle, but it's not like, not there, which was my concern. Okay, we're gonna blend that into the crease just to start with as a base. And then I think I'm going to take, hmm, hmm, wow, this is hard. Um, I'm gonna take Side Hustle which is this green here, and kind of work that into the crease as well. Something that I actually have learned from Emily is that just because a color is shimmery doesn't mean you can discount it for the crease. Once it's sheared out a little bit, it doesn't always look quite so shimmery, which I am finding to be true in her palette, though my crease is looking a little bit muddy. I feel like that's the fault of my color choices though. So far I've gotten a very dull brown color and a weird green color. Well not weird, it's like a army green shimmer. So it's not a wonder that turned a little muddy. This may or may not end up being a good eyeshadow look, guys. I have no plan. I'm just here to play. I'm gonna dip in a corduroy. Corduroy is this one here, this green. I'm gonna put that in the crease as well. Ooh, holy pigment, Batman! Wow, let's uh, let's blend that out a little bit. Wow. That's one thing I've really noticed about this palette is that the mattes, most of them are super pigmented. So that's usually where palettes are weaker are the mattes, but these are super, super pigmented. 
and back to corduroy. That's a little better. It's like a shadowy green thing rather than something weird and muddy. I can live with that. I'm gonna clean this brush off and I'm gonna dip into the cream, which is this white creamy sort of a shade. I'm gonna use that, try to use that as a brow bone highlight maybe. Blend out those edges. Ooh, okay, that actually worked. It's the first time I've ever found a white that I could actually see on my skin. Wow. Really impressed right now. Oh, that's not good. Me and the light are not having a good time. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take a finger and dip into Grateful, which is this like, ooh, ooh, I apparently already dipped into it, which is this really gorgeous, like, pale sea green shade. Pop that right in the center of the lid. Oh, oh wow, that came across. Is it just me or is that coming across more yellow? I think it comes across more yellow than it does in the pan, but it's super stunning. It's not quite the color I was going I think it just looks, I think it just looks yellow next to that corduroy shade, which is a very blue green sort of a color. So, I'm gonna do a little bit of blending out there. I'm gonna take another finger and dip into Good Vibes, which is right next to it. It's this like, pinky tone, and kind of bring that along the inner and outer corners, because why not, you know? Because why not play with the pink and green bit? Especially since it actually turned out okay. And a little bit more on the outside. This is like... This is a very unique, these are all very unique colors. Yeah, this crease definitely turned out a little bit muddy. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the shade, of the shade Hobby. Um, I think you have to be careful what you use with it. Because those greens, did not like those. It did not like those. Okay, I'm gonna go back in to Grateful. Right, that back up. It's actually turning out a lot better than I expected. Love when that happens. Alright, now I'm gonna grab this little guy here and go into Oh Heavens and put that on my inner corners. Ooh, that's pretty blinding. I mean, I'm comparing it to my ColourPop Flexitarian, so there's very little that actually compares to that, but this does look really nice. And I think I will rub that off and take Cheer, which is this matte color right here. It's like a brownish, reddish, pinkish, orangish. I'm so good at this. It kind of works with uh, good vibes. And get that going along the lower lash line. And kind of bring it up into here a bit. And bring it out. Okay, and now I'm going to go with ooh, the end of this. Take it and then kind of smudge everything together a little bit better. Here's mm. my blending brush. I'm going to take this blending brush and dip into cheer just a tiny bit. And Work a little bit of that into the crease, kind of warm it up. Cool colored creases are <laughs> cool colored creases are really hard to work with. You've got to be really patient and really careful and really know your colors. I found that out the hard way multiple times, including today. So yeah, just a pro tip there. Um, even if you use primarily cool colors on your eyes, in most cases, a warm crease is going to be a lot better as far as shadowing things out. See, like, it's a lot cleaner. Wow, that highlight is blending. Yeah, I got to dip into a lot of these today. I got to dip into some new ones. I'm just gonna throw on some mascara and call it a day. I'm gonna grab my Wander Beauty Unleashed Volume and Curl. Yeah, there's not much going on lash wise, but. Yeah, I don't really have a lip product for today. Um, 
I will show you my setting spray. I don't really need to use setting spray today, but I'll show you the one I got. Um, I got the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Um, this one was one that I saw on Kathleen Lights' channel, actually. And she said this was one of her favorite things of 2018, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Because it's a lot cheaper than almost any of the other setting sprays I have, with the exception of my Makeup Revolution one. So, that's all I've got for you guys today. Just some, you know, goof off, makeup playtime, play with colors. A little bit of this. Here's a close-up of that makeup look. Not perfect by any stretch, but you know what? It's 8.30. There's no reason for me to have perfect makeup right now. This was just some goof off playtime. And I learned some things, which that's what's that's what's important. It's never about getting it perfect. If you're going out somewhere, you know, yeah, do what you can if you want to. But make sure that if you want to improve with something, just make time to play with it. Make time to enjoy it and have fun and goof off. Because that's where all the learning happens. Learning happens with the mistakes. But yep, that's all I've got for you guys today. Make sure you hit, give, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell button next to subscribe so that you know when all my videos come out. Which is, under most circumstances, every Tuesday. So, thank you guys for sticking around this long. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!